Everywhere you hear about the perfect routines, but is this just a thing as a perfect routine? What if you were to take a real scientist who is deeply knowledgeable about the real science on a truly profound level and has them design a routine? How would it look like? Let me introduce you to the exercises from the absolute favorite scientist of the internet. Andrew Huberman. His podcast now is over 300 million subscribers. He's a professor of neurobiology at Stanford University and for the next few days I will be testing a scientifically proven routine aiming to maximize productivity, happiness and testosterone. Phase 1 is waking up between 6am and 6.30am without an alarm clock. What does your morning routine look like at the moment? Around about what time? Uh, I'm waking up these days around 6am, 6.30am. Phase will just hold on the first step. When Andy Huberman sleeps, let's get some sunlight in. So that's what I'm going to do. When I wake up, I make a beeline for sunlight. The single best thing you can do for your sleep, your energy, your mood, your wakefulness, your metabolism is to get natural light in your eyes early in the day. Don't wear sunglasses to do it. it takes about 10 minutes or so. I hydrate. I drink water. So I would just take a little bit of, of sea salt. Salt water actually doesn't taste as different than disgusting as I thought. The bit of salt in the morning is important because simply put, it helps the brain function better, especially when fasting, and you have to get those electrolytes in. I do everything I can to not do email, not do social media, and to take care of a few critical tasks. I have this obsession with trying to do one cognitively hard thing a day and one physically hard thing a day. Then I do caffeine about um, 90 to 120 minutes um, after waking. Well, oh, usually I would drink this coffee now, but Andy Huberman actually delays his caffeine intake by about 90 to 120 minutes after waking up. So I have to wait another 30 minutes. And to take care of a few critical tasks. These days, I am I have this obsession with trying to do one cognitively hard thing a day. Doing the hardest task directly in the morning. I also like to call this eating the frog, and I've been doing this for about three months. I just instantly do the hardest task, usually just working out for me or recording or scripting videos. So let's get right to it. Or I'll work on a document that I might be doing a grant or research paper or planning a podcast or researching a podcast. I try and get my brain into kind of a linear mode. I try and narrow that aperture. Because if I don't, the distraction that's created by social media and interactions with others can kind of wick out into the rest of the day. So the next thing that Edwish Women does is meditation, some kind of breath work or stretching and yoga. And I decided myself to do the Wim Hof breathing method because I've been doing it for a long time and it's really helped me with my anxiety. And here are some more benefits on why meditation is so good, explained by Andrew Huberman. And I think agree that mindfulness includes something about being present. And when I say present, that doesn't necessarily mean present to one's surroundings because of course a lot of meditation practices that are designed to make us more mindful and present are designed to make us more mindful and present to what's happening internally while ignoring everything that's happening externally. But they are designed to make us more present to our bodily sensations and in particular our breathing and our thoughts in the moment. There are now studies exploring whether or not this simple meditation-like practice of 15 to 20 minutes or so of sitting and just quietly resting and paying attention to one's breathing and internal state can also offset some of that age-related cognitive decline. Regardless of whether or not you're a child or you're an adult, whether or not you have ADHD or not, whether or not you're experiencing age-related cognitive decline or you would simply like to avoid age-related cognitive decline, a simple practice of taking 17 minutes sitting and paying attention to your internal state, registering your breathing, registering the contact of your skin with whatever surface you're on, can forever rewire your brain to be able to attend better and possibly even offset some of that age-related attentional drift. And so if ever there was a tool that stood to rewire our attentional circuitry in a powerful way, this seems to be it. To summarize the most important points of Andrew Huberman's routine, sticking to the entire routine might be unrealistic for most people due to work or school. But still, this routine contains some pretty good and interesting things that you might want to try to improve your mental health, productivity, and testosterone. You could pick and choose what you want and adapt it to your own style. I do the Andrew Huberman routine as he does it every single day. I have my own routine, so usually I just wake up, then work out, get a cold shower, head to school. But personally, I would definitely adopt some things like meditation in the morning. I hope you could take something valuable away from this video, and if you did, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment, and share this video to a friend. Also, you can click on the first link in the description book, a free one-on-one -on -one call with me, where we can talk about self-improvement in general. I would try to help you one-on-one -on -one as best as possible.